Okay, uh, hello everybody. The, um, actually, I, I would start rather on a comment on, on something you said in the introduction, which was that we were taken by surprise and that we, we didn't see this coming. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually, it's interesting to, to, to have an FAO information officer because I wanted to, to remind people there that in uh, 2004, FAO published this um, so-called report, which I <coughs> Sorry, which actually warned us uh, very clearly on what was going to happen and already said that in uh, terms of trade for the poorest countries, uh, increasing dependency on food imports was a serious issue that had to be dealt with. And, and it was a very, uh, very serious report with a very serious warning on the, on the situation of especially the, the least developed countries, but the developing countries in general. Uh, also, so what was very interesting, it was uh, showing a trend which was over 30 or 40 years, and it was a very obvious trend. It was not just a crisis or not just one event we had to deal with, but a real serious trend that needed uh, 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 policy thinking rather than, uh, than a, uh, an immediate response. And uh, so back to our, to our question about the, the UN and this uh, governance of the food systems, Clearly, there was no mechanism to, to say at this time, oh, yes, yeah, this is a very important finding of FAO. We're going to do something about it. Some one, uh, one about the problems, but a uh, number of certainly developing countries took measures, but globally, there was no mechanism to, to think this through and say, okay, we need to maybe to, to think, uh, uh, think through a way to, to address mm -hmm. what, what we have in front of us. Uh, then it was really uh, interesting from uh, uh, our NGO perspective to, to see uh, this high-level task force being set up uh, last year. As for the first time, we had all the multilateral organizations getting together to try to work out together a policy framework. Even though for us, as for uh, many, many uh, NGOs and southern groups, there was some concern about the, the role of the Bretton Woods institutions. We had some uh, responsibility in the, in the situation where we, are, where we are today, and we are also uh, becoming part of the solution. And this has led, we discussed this with David, to some uh, uh, criticism and, uh, and opposition from a number of southern governments and, uh, and the southern NGOs and many of the Oxfam's partners in, uh, in the developing countries. Uh, but we... We, we had eventually this, this mobilization, and I think we, we uh, as Oxfam, we clearly welcome this, uh, this mobilization of all key players to, uh, to, uh, to get their act together on the, on the food crisis. That we really see not as uh, one, uh, one event in 2007, 2008, but really as a result of a, of a long-term trend and as a result of, uh, of uh, failed policies on, on food and agriculture. Uh, fully agree with uh, with David. There's no. Uh, it's, it's difficult to to, to 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 figure out what a global governance for the food system would, would look like, and it's uh, very difficult to envision. Clearly, the priority should be uh, uh, for countries and certain regions to uh, to put policies in place. But still, we 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 still believe the, the UN and the multilateral system in general have a very important role to, to, to play. Uh, the different reasons to that, the UN is a, is a depository of the, of the right to the, the human rights, including the right to food, and I was very glad to hear uh, David uh, 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 in, uh, including this, uh, this, uh, this uh, right in the, the work of the High Level Task Force. Clearly for, for for the people in the poor and in the poorest countries, this is this is key. This is key to have this this kind of overarching principle uh, being held by the by the UN, especially in the case their governments don't uh, respect or don't work on the on the realization of the right to food. Uh, this is one, one one key value for the for the UN. There are many others around the, the, the technical expertise, the ability to support countries on, on technically, but also policy wise. Uh, the capacity to mobilize resources, and it's sure when we when we see uh, uh, the, the the funding systems, uh, ODI has done very interesting studies on that. But the way the funding uh, is uh, is playing in many countries, 
it's uh, it's really it's really crazy to see so many channels and and all this mix of phones and bilateral and multilateral, and having something more coherent, more consistent will will make more sense if we if we if we if we can make it if we can make it work and if we can make it attractive. And and today uh, we are also glad to see that this is one of the challenges uh, uh, David is working on is. Uh, uh, try to make this attractive to uh, to donors. Try to make donors uh, uh, believe in some kind of multilateral system that will uh, that will serve the, the right purposes. Um, and also key, of course, to to have a voice for the the poorest countries. And uh, that's again why we we had this, uh, this kind of resistance to the the high level task force and to the Bretton Woods institutions. Number of countries and uh, southern NGOs and family organizations are saying. Uh, wait a minute, if we, if we don't invest on the Rome based agencies and if we have uh, WTO, World Bank and IMF uh, strong players in that, all countries won't have the same voice and won't have the, 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 the same weight in the discussions and our interests won't be taken into consideration as much as we would like to. So it is uh, certainly a, a, a relevant concern for, um, for a, a, number of, uh, a number of factors. And, uh, and that has that I need to be taken into account when we when we work on this uh, on this UN multilateral system. There are many weaknesses today. Uh, I have only five minutes. I don't even know when I started. Uh, well, you, Twenty no, years. Not no, no, a couple of minutes, Brian. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't want to be too long because I can just expand on on this. Uh, Many weaknesses, and, and the first one is uh, the lack of clarity on the on the, the role and the who is doing what in this uh, in this multilateral system, uh, both in terms of institution and, and global mechanisms. Uh, I said there was no global mechanism to to to, to work on the, the policies we needed, but there are. Uh, there's a committee on world food security which is now uh, being reformed, but which was in place uh, actually exactly for this reason to uh, to to work on the policies on, on food and agriculture. This has failed to uh, to uh, to act and to uh, and to provide solutions. But also, uh, really, very important questions about the role of different agencies. We've seen the World Bank doing uh, 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 seeds and fertilizers, food aid, even in this emergency response. While FAO and WFP were also calling for the same uh, some kind of uh, uh, interventions in response to the food crisis. So we're. We certainly need to clarify who is going to do what, and it, uh, being more clear on that will, uh, will allow certainly every organization to be more effective. And this is another uh, objective for the high-level task force that everybody does this business more more effectively in the in the future. Um, imbalance has been a serious concern for 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 Oxfam. Imbalance with still this uh, this. Food, uh, international assistance on food and agriculture, which is dominated by food aid. Today, there's more food aid than uh, aid to, to agriculture. And it has been like this for the past uh, 10 or 20 years. So not that we don't need food aid. Of course, we, we need food assistance, but we need something else too. Uh, and we need also certainly to rethink the way, we, the way we're working on, on, on food assistance. We, we are very pressed WFP under the chairman for the new strategic plan of WFP, which we really try to open the organization to, uh, to some new models and new ways of working. And we really think it's very important to, to, to go in, that, uh, in this direction and certainly to also go there uh, with this broader view of the, on, on, the Rome, uh, on the Rome system, on the Rome hub, which will not just look at different ways to do food aid or to, do, uh, to uh, address immediate needs, but also see what are the links with, uh, with agriculture, what are the links with food and agriculture policies that should be put in place by states or regional institutions. And uh, this is certainly somewhere where the, the, the high level task force could have a good contribution because today we have, especially in Rome, but all over the system, we have institutions working in parallel, sometimes in, in opposition, competing for funding. And, uh, and there's, really, uh, there's really a need to, uh, to have some, some leadership giving some, some, uh, some directions to the, to the world thing in order to be more coherent and, and effective. Uh, I have much more to say, but I, I may stop there and uh, come back on, on, on this later. Uh, anyway, we, just to conclude, we were glad that this investment by the Alliable Task Force is now focusing on, on countries.
to to support national regional policies. Uh, this is certainly the, the, the best way forward. Uh, global work will have to happen to, to make sure that every multilateral institution uh, plays play a game and go in this direction because this is what we need and we need uh, effective food and agriculture policies at country level supported by not just a coordinated multilateral system but really a multilateral system and UN agencies who are converging and who are finding coherence in the way they are, they are operating towards more effective responses to, to, to anger. Okay, stop there and can come back later if you, if you need me. Thank you. Okay, thanks.